Welcome back. Uh, in this tutorial, we will learn about uh, regression node. Uh, so we've already brought in a data source, in this case, Boston Housing. Um, we have, a, if you recall, three input variables and one target variable. We then partition the data, uh, 60, 40, 60 for uh, training the data, that is to create a model using training data, and then 40% for uh, validating, the, validating the model. Okay, so let's now go to the model tab. And here you see we have a whole lot of options, including decision trees. But for the time being, we need the regression node. So let's drag and drop this onto the diagram. Okay, so now we have uh, the regression node right here. We need to complete the process flow by dragging and dropping the arrow here. And we have regression. And if you select regression, the properties on the left-hand side panel, the panel here, should change, right? Uh, and again, as I mentioned, uh, the it, you can always check what's coming in uh, into the into the node by clicking on the variables here, right? And it should show you uh, the variable list, and it shows you which variables are used as input, which is the target variable, and you can see that everything else is rejected. Okay, you can also see the level of the variable. So most inputs, most nodes here, lets you see what's coming in, uh, and then then you can try to work with it, okay? So now you see a lot of options here, and again, don't be overwhelmed by all these options. Uh, we'll talk about some of these options in class, okay? Uh, for the time being, know that SAS tries to guess the most commonly used scenario, okay? And it tries to uh, have some default options, the important thing is to know what to change and in this case you would need to change at least to begin you would need to change two things for sure right you want to read uh, you're going to leave everything on the equation side as is default options okay and we'll talk about the equation if you remember regression is basically y equal to you know um, beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 beta 2 x2 and so on so we can specify uh, some values here we'll talk about this later okay but we're going to leave them as is the main thing we need to do is we come down here, target variable, what type of regression type you know, are we running? This says logistic regression. And again, if you think about it, logistic regression, the target variable should be a categorical variable. And in this case, if you recall, the target variable is a continuous variable, interval. So we need to change the default to linear regression. Okay. And when you select this, this is not relevant to linear regression. So if you don't know what logit function is, don't need to worry about it not relevant at all to what we need to do. It's more for logistic regression. So select linear regression, okay? The one other important thing that you may want to change is something called input coding, okay? So the default option is deviation coding. We need to pick something called GLM coding, okay? Um, all I want to say at this point is that this is basically specifying uh, how we would interpret coefficients for uh, categorical variables, okay? And again, hopefully this will make a lot more sense when we discuss this in class uh, in terms of how to interpret the coefficients, okay? And I'm picking GLM because they are much easier to interpret than uh, coding image use using deviation, okay? There are situations where you might want to use this, but for most of us, most situations, GLM is the one you want to use and it's easiest to explain the meaning of, okay? So these are the only two things you will change. And in class, we may we will play around a little bit more with the selection model, you know. But we're not going to do this at this moment. We want to run something very simple, simple regression. Okay. Uh, if you're familiar with regression, maybe some of these things make sense to you. You can go ahead and play with them. But for the time being, I'm going to leave that as the default option. The only two things we changed: regression type to linear regression, and input coding to GLM. Okay. And then if you want, of course, always a good idea to take a look at uh, different options. But again, don't be overwhelmed by the options. Okay. You need to know what to change. And in this case, it tells you, you know, what the help panel, you know, the, and, uh, below here is typically useful. It tells you, you know, the meaning of these properties. So hopefully, you know, they are, they're helpful to you. Okay. So now we've pretty much done everything we need to do. SAS does most of the work for us. We've dragged and dropped the regression node, Change two properties here, linear regression and GLM coding. Remember that. And all you need to do is get ready to run, um, run 
the model. Okay, so let's run. You want to run this path? Yes. All right, the model's here, so we can click OK and select results from here, or you can directly select results before, right? Let's look at the results. Okay, so let's open this. So here are the results. Okay, again at first first blush, it looks like it's a lot of lot of stuff here to make sense of. Uh, for the time being, we don't need to worry about most of these outputs. Uh, in class, I will explain how to evaluate the model using this table. And again, it's going to be pretty simple. Uh, you can actually explain the results by looking at any one of these fit statistics. I uh, like RMSE, okay, root mean square error. Uh, if you remember, the purpose of this prediction is to minimize uh, the error, right? So this, is, this tells us something about the root mean squared error, right? Both for the training as well as the validation data set, okay? And if you remember, this is a value for um, the results that the value for uh, uh, this, this is the training, um, the value for the training model, right? The error for the training model. And this is the error when we applied that model to the validation data set, okay? Again, I'm going to say more about this when we meet in class, okay? But really, for all these, uh, all, I mean, for all the rows that are here, we can just pick one of those. And I like RMSE, right? Uh, root mean squared error. We know uh, the prediction means, uh, better prediction means minimize the error. And I can look at this and say, okay, the error, uh, the root mean squared error was 5.6 for training, 6.8 for validation. When I use the model that I developed with the training data, okay? So we'll talk more about it. For the time being, let's not worry about it, okay? This is really what we are going to be using to evaluate uh, the model the concept is very similar regardless of um, the different models you might use okay neural networks decision trees this is what we're going to be doing all right so now the thing that i want to focus on for the time being is a thing that you should know already uh, if you know some basic regression so i'm going to move the output here okay um, maybe make it slightly larger so you can ignore the other things okay let me just make it bigger all right now I'd like you to take some, take a moment to examine the output. Scroll down. You know, maybe some of these you can ignore. Okay, I'm just gonna scroll down. Uh, you can see that here are the input variables. Here are some of the rejected variables. Here's the target variable. Okay, and if I scroll down more, I'm just going to go down here. And really, for me, the most important and meaningful uh, part of this would be right here. Right, analysis of maximum likelihood estimates. Okay, so here we have the intercept. And here you have variable number one, which is for Charles River. And here you have CRIM and room, okay? And here are your beta coefficients, or rather this column. This is your beta coefficients, okay? And what I want you to do before you come to class uh, is to think about what these values mean. In other words, maybe you can even do a Google search, how to interpret right? The results of a regression, how to interpret the beta coefficients, right? So what does this really mean? Uh, I think it's simpler for uh, variables, continuous variables. So what does this mean? Okay. Um, what does this number mean? So try to do some Google search. And before you come to class, I would like you to at least tell me what do these betas mean? Okay. For the, in, uh, for the dependent variable. Remember, I'm using this to predict, right? Uh, predict the target variable, which is MEDB. So really two questions, I would say. Maybe I'll, I'll modify this. Two questions for you. One, how would you interpret these beta coefficients? And number two, how would you write the equation? Okay, and that's maybe slightly more difficult. You really have to know regression a little bit. Uh, but try you know just take a quick look at uh, google search how do you interpret regression results and how do you write out an equation given that these are the results okay thank you